I'm glad to be here this morning and I'm excited about the topic. In fact, I'm a bit nervous because I'm so excited and passionate about this topic, you know, and making uh, multiple six figures in less than 10 hours a week, okay? You know, if we could just create better efficiency, you know, we can execute this, right? And if we have better efficiency and we do our business in less time, then we have either more time to make more money or we have more time to spend with the people we love. So what's better than that, right? Today, I'm gonna to take you through five steps. And I've really refined this. I've been working on this for many, many years, okay? I've been Centur Centurion uh, 2017 and 2018. So I'm gonna share my steps with you this morning. And uh, well, let's get into it. So six figures a year, 10 hours a week. Creating efficiency in your everyday real estate business. All right, so step one. You're going to need to transform your mindset. It's true. You know, we can't often accomplish significant goals if we first don't believe that we can do it. Sometimes we just need to be open, right? We have to, you know, those messages, I think I can, I've got this. Or you know what? Not that I can't do it. How am I going to do that? Okay, so I really want to inspire you today to change your mindset so that you'll have more time for what, whatever it is that you want. You know, or maybe just create six figures, you know, or multiple six figures. So transforming your mindset is gonna be the first step. The second step, maximizing your energy. It's such a simple thing, maximizing our energy, but how do we do it? Let me share a story with you. Back in 2016, I look over here because somebody's gonna resonate with the story. Back in 2016, I had a listing and we had something like 130 showings on it. I was exhausted because I was texting the tenants every single time to book the showings. Exhausted. And after eight offers, I still didn't have an accepted offer with that seller. And then I had a buyer and he kept calling me and he wanted to chat and pick my brain, which I love. But at the same time, he didn't have the time to go, you know, sort out his financing so he could make an offer and close a deal. And I thought, you know what? Something has to change. You know, I need to change something. And so what I did, I actually went out. I'm going to share this with you. And I thought, what better way when you want to get inspired, go find a book. <laughs> so I read this book, The 12-Week Year. This book changed things for me. In fact, I'll give you a chance to win this book at the end, so pay attention. <laughs> That's incentive. You know, but reading that book made me change my mind on setting those 12-month goals. You know, January 1st, we set our goals. What am I going to do this year? I'm going to do better than last year or better than two years ago, or how am I going to transform my goals? But that book, when I put my goals into a 12-week timeline, it was incredible the power that that had, just that little book. You know, but it was the concepts that really challenged me. And so 2017, that was the first year that I came, became a Centurion. And it was an incredible uh, accomplishment for me. But also because I started compressing my goals. Instead of waiting for the next year to come around, I could actually transform my goals, see how I was doing after 12 weeks, and then you know what? Take a break for a week, the next 12 weeks starts. Right? And it's a much more uh, profound way to look at our goals than just waiting for 12 more months, you know, or waiting for the next new year, okay? So maximizing my energy. I'm gonna share a couple of other things that I did to really transform my energy, okay? One was, it's gonna sound silly, drink more water. I started drinking more water. Seriously, when you're yawning in the afternoon, drinking more water, honestly. I got off caffeine. This is me on water, <laughs> okay? No caffeine. Okay, and I used to drink as much coffee as anybody, like a lot of coffee, but I stopped drinking coffee and caffeine a year and a half ago, okay? Just little changes that we can make, right? Again, because I was feeling exhausted and I wanted to do better with my time, right? So all of these little changes would happen instead of being up all night, you know, working on, I don't know what, the scrolling through matrix, I would actually sleep. So now I sleep at night. And it's amazing how much you can get done with just a little bit extra sleep, right? And more focus. And that transforming my energy has been so beneficial. So I just want to share a few of these uh, key tips with you. Okay. 
Step three, this is a good one, okay? Step three, use a system. And there's lots of them out there. But I went to a conference in 2018 and I was introduced to a system that allows me to identify a person's personality and crack their personality code in 90 seconds. 90 seconds. And then I know who I'm working with. And then I know how do I present the information. And then I know what's going to connect with them so that they can make a decision and move forward. And then I show up with the right things. You know, some people need a 60-page CMA. Some people just want you to tell them the price right now and get the sign in the ground like yesterday. But if I don't know what kind of personality I'm dealing with, I don't know how to ensure that I'm going to close this deal. Because the intent really with having a system is to know that every single person that I come in contact with that wants to do business with me, I need to know that I can close that deal. And that's what I've been able to really transform as well by using this system. Now, like I said, there's lots of systems out there, but I think you've got to find one that works for you. And for me, I found one that works. You know, being able to understand those personalities and how we work with them, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. I did it with my kids, for crying out loud. Now I know how to, I've cracked my kids' personality codes, and I know how to work with them too. <laughs> Negotiation's much, much easier, okay? So having a system in place really, really helps us, you know, expand our business, become much more efficient, and then execute more precisely. Because isn't that what we want? You know, every person that we're working with, if we can close every single deal, how does that change our business? How does that change our time, right? So it's such a great opportunity. All right, step four, leverage. Now, I do have a picture with the fulcrum here. And really what we're looking at is, you know, how much energy you have to put in for the effect, right? So how much effort we have to put in. And if we can leverage there's lots of things that we can leverage. So for example, what I love to focus on is working with experts. You know, in our business, we have huge networks, right? Part of it is, you know, working with an experienced lawyer. How about an experienced mortgage broker, right? These people in our network make a huge difference, not only for us, but for our clients. You know, getting them the right results, you know, and helping us ensure that they get the right property closed at the right time, okay? Beyond that, look at us in here. What a great network, you know? The great opportunity is experienced agents, as you get busy, you know, sometimes you call maybe a newer agent or maybe an agent that's not as busy. You hire them, you pay them, they help you out because maybe you're getting slowed down by the paperwork. Maybe you can't make that home inspection because you gotta show something else. And then, you know, we pay it forward or pay it back, you know? And new agents, I did the same thing. Guess what? You can leverage the experienced agents. Right? So experienced agents will get their time back and newer agents, you know, or maybe less busy agents will be able to make some more money or learn better systems. Okay? So there's great opportunities even here with all of us. Right? Okay? There's people in this room right now that were helping me yesterday and this morning and last night while I was working on this speech you know, to make sure that I could be here and present for you guys. Right? So taking care of some of those details. So leverage our network. It's such an important piece. You know, even thinking about our, our great team, look at our marketing department, right? You know, such a great support. Even the people putting up our signs and taking them down. Oh my goodness, right? I couldn't be out there doing that right now. I'm so thankful and grateful for them. So leveraging our network, leveraging our team, okay? Technology. Remember, like five or 10 years ago, we would have to like drive everywhere to get any signature on any piece of paper? <coughs> Seriously, I love my phone, right? All of the tools and technology we have, that has transformed business as well. You know, I can be standing in the grocery store waiting, you know, but instead I can maximize my minutes. I know that I've just got a deal that's firmed up, I have to get some paperwork out to the lawyer, great. Boom, forward, boom, forward, boom, forward. You know, or my clients, you know, they need to sign something, great. DocuSign, AuthentiSign, when we can send that out and they can sign from anywhere, they pull over on the highway, they can review the deal, you know, send it to them in a PDF so they can read it, <laughs> you know. But they can do it from anywhere as well. And it's really transformed our business. You know, when we think about how much time we would spend before driving to somebody's house, you know, or you miss an initial, okay. And it's not just driving there, and it's not just getting them to sign it, but, we're chit-chatting, 
right? Connecting, which is nice, but at the same time, it's taking away from the next deal we could be working on. You know, so really leveraging technology. And it goes beyond just, you know, our phones, right? Or DocuSign, AuthentiSign, but also, what about Zoom or Skype? I mean, sometimes we do need a face-to-face -face meeting, right? Sometimes, you know, you're having a negotiation or you need to go through something with a client. It's so great that we can actually go on our phone and have a video chat, then we're face-to-face. -face. In fact, yesterday, I was working with another agent trying to explain something on a CMA and I said, hey, why don't we just get online? Great, we got online, we can zoom in together, I can show you matrix, you can see what I'm working on. Great, problem solved, then we get back to business, right? It's such a great way to connect and it's a great way to, you know, leverage that piece of technology. And I know we're all doing things like, you know, Bluetooth in the car and calling people, you know, but I think it's just an important piece to keep in mind. And as technology changes, it's great for all of us to, you know, leverage that key piece. Okay, so technology. All right, so that was step five. So creating efficiency, this is what I want to share with you. In 2017, 64% of my buyers purchased after one showing. One showing. They looked at one property and they bought it, 64%. Okay? And 45% of my, class were, my um, clients were previous or repeat clients. Okay? So I'm not suggesting we just sell somebody something and then that's it. No, I think relations are key and you want people to trust you and come back. But I'm going to get into the steps of how we do this. In 2018, 71% of my buyers purchased after one showing. 71%. Okay, one showing, one house. So I improved that 7% year over year and 47% of my clients were repeat clients. Okay, so I think this is important because I wanna get into the strategy of how we make this happen. Because I think there's another key piece here. Okay, and so the strategy I'm gonna share with you is this. How do we spend 10 hours with either a buyer or 10 hours with a seller? Start to finish, okay? So let's go through this. The first thing with a buyer is they're going to email you or call you or text you and say, hey, I want to talk to you. Okay, great. So when you set up your first initial meeting, make sure when you set up that call with them, you know, and hopefully if you've got two buyers that are buying a property, set it up with both of them. Set up that call, but don't use Bluetooth. Set up that call when you know you're going to be in your office with a notepad and a pen. We're going to go old school on this one, okay? The reason being, that initial call that you set up, you know, that 30 minute call, maybe it's 25 minutes, maybe it's 15 minutes, maybe it's 35 minutes, that call is going to be the most important call and conversation you make because it is going to be that fulcrum, right? That is going to transform how much effort or energy you have to put in to get to that, that final close, okay? And we got to listen. We have to listen, you know, and we're asking those key questions like, what's your vision? You know, why are you buying right now? You know, what's your timeline? When are you hoping to be in the house? I mean, these are things we all, we all have our list of questions, right? But when we ask them, what is their vision? You know, who's moving into the house? What does your family look like? What kind of neighborhood do you want to be in? What kind of feeling do you want to have? What, you know, what are you looking for? When we get their vision and we're writing that down, for me, it gives me the opportunity to put myself in their shoes. And then I can start to decipher, okay, if I were them, what would be the perfect house for me? What house would I want? Because at the end of the day, we want our clients to be happy and call us back, right? So if we put ourselves in their shoes, I mean, ideally, buyers, they come to us and they say, hey, you know, I was online. You know, I'd like to look at this house or that house. Now you've got their vision. Now you can say, hmm, I'm not sure if you want to be in the South Ward. Maybe we should actually focus on houses in the North Ward or, you know, whatever the case may be, right, that fits with that buyer. So you might still go out, and I like to strategize this based on two tours, okay? A tour being an hour and a half to two hours, and you're going to go out and show them three to five properties, okay? So that would be one tour. You're going to spend an hour and a half to two hours, and you're going to show them three to five properties. One or two might be their choice. The rest are going to be your choice. So for example, if somebody says to me they want a fixer-upper, you know, and they've got one in mind, great. So that's, that goes on the list. The next thing that goes on the list, another really good opportunity, a real fixer-upper, okay? Something, you know, hardcore, <laughs> okay? Then I'll put in something that's maybe a moderate, you know, moderate update, moderate renos, and then I'll put in kind of a, a turnkey, you know, that doesn't need as much work or any at all. 
and we go out on the tour. And then at the end of the tour, I get the feedback. You know, so how was that? What really resonated for you? What property could you see yourself buying? So at least we get that short list at the end of the first tour. Then I know, do they really want a fixer upper? Or is a turnkey a better solution? You know, did they like the neighborhood they thought they wanted to be in? Or do they prefer the neighborhood that I as a professional have recommended for them? You know, once we have that sorted out, then we plan the second tour. And by then, that's pretty much my job to come up with those next three to five properties. At the end of the second tour, they're gonna make an offer. Okay, that is our goal, right? If we're being efficient with our job, this isn't in every case, but I just showed you my stats, right? 71% of my buyers last year bought a house after one showing. One house, one property, not one tour. One property, okay? So if we can leverage that and really focus on, you know, what is their vision, what are they saying, we listen at the beginning, it helps us narrow it down. You know, and we can make it happen in those two tours, okay? So the two tours will take you about three to four hours, right? So we're breaking it down in 10 hours or so. Writing the offer, it's gonna take you about an hour, especially if you have everything saved, all your key clauses and everything else, right? A home inspection, we know, that's two to three hours, right? Unless maybe you can leverage it out with somebody else um, that you can hire to, uh, to work for you from the office, right? Paperwork, you know, you're gonna have about an hour of paperwork to follow up, lawyers, et cetera, share that around, and then some other kind of follow-up. And there you have about 10 hours, start to finish, okay? You know, some of the other key questions that we ask buyers before we take them out, you know, remember my buyer that kept calling me in 2016 and wanting to talk to me but didn't have financing? Guess what? Now I make sure when I get on the phone, hey, do you have a mortgage broker you're working with? Who is it? What did they say to you? You know, are you pre-approved? Do you know what your limits are? You don't have somebody? Great. Let me connect you with somebody that I work with. I'll give you a couple of choices. Let me send you the contacts now and then give me a call back once you have some kind of response, okay? That also narrows down the timeline, okay? And then we know what we're looking at, right? It helps us really focus and be really efficient with what we're doing, okay? So I do the same thing for sellers. 10 hours per seller. Again, we're gonna get some kind of intro or email, you know, set up a good time to book the appointment, right? Then we're gonna set up a face-to-face -face meeting at their house, right? You know, walk in the door, say, hey, give me a tour of your house. And hopefully you're meeting with, you know, both of the sellers if there's two, you know, or one seller if it's just the one. But ideally you wanna meet with everybody. So again, you can assess, if you use the system, you know, figure out what is their personalities and then how do I have to, you know, help everybody out through this process? You know, what do I need to be doing to show up to make this easy for them? So the face-to-face -face meeting is basically a tour through their house. You know, maybe a sit down and a chat. You go through your process as well. After that, you're gonna do your research and your comparable market analysis. Again, that's gonna take probably about an hour, you know, give or take, right? Then you'll be back at their house to do the listing. But the photographer, remember, we're hiring out, right? We're using the experts. Professional photographer is gonna show up with us at the same time. We'll do our measurements. Again, very efficient, um, less intrusive for the seller. You just book that one time slot, get it all done within, let's say two hours. You can usually do it about 60 to 90 minutes. And then down the road, you're gonna get an offer, right? Because we're gonna sell it. So there's gonna be some time for negotiating that offer. And again, we're gonna have paperwork and then some kind of follow-up. So again, start to finish, you're about 10 hours. The only reason I got to the system was because remember back in 2016, the listing that I had 130 showings on and tenants that I had to text every single showing. Yeah, that's why I started coming up with the system to make it easier, right? To stay focused because if we have a goal and we know, okay, I'm gonna spend about 10 hours with a client, whether it's 10 hours with a buyer or 10 hours with a seller, we can really focus our time. Okay, does it seem like we're gonna be able to get to this 10 hours? No, are we in the right position to start? If we are, great, let's get on with it. If they're not ready to buy now, or they're not pre-approved, or they're not motivated, or they're not sure about their vision, et cetera, then give them some time and space to figure that out. You know, you can coach them through that a bit, but give them the tools they need, and then get them to circle back when they're ready, so that when you start with them, you can finish within 10 hours, okay? Based on the stats that I provided you, in 2017, on average, if you look at, you know, 10 hours per client based on my ends or whatever, I was doing about 4.2 hours a week in 2017. And then, uh, 2018, about 6.3 hours a week, okay? Averaged out, okay? That just gives you an idea, okay? Just with timelines. So here, the key takeaways. So this is where I wanna ask you, have you been paying attention to the five steps to transform your business? So, if you can, 
I want to say like run up here, but I don't know if anyone's going to run up. <laughs> if you've been drinking coffee this morning, maybe. I Who, notes. You did? <laughs> You're the best. Come on up. You want a mic? Oh, no, I don't need a mic. <laughs> okay. What are they? Transform your mindset. Yep. How can I achieve this? Maximize your energy, get off yes. coffee, you kind of lost me there, but I don't work on it. <laughs> Drink more water, get that 12-week book, which yes. I'm going to get. Yes. Um, use a system. Yes. The personality one or whatever Whatever works, works for, you. for you. Yep. Leverage how much effort we put in to see the results. Yes. Experience yes. team. Yes. Surround yourself with those people. Yep. Technology, use it. Da-da-da. Boom. <laughs> and thank you. Go. Thank you. <laughs> and there we have it. Professional. I love it. <laughs> Thank you for running up here. I love that, Christine. <laughs> so what I want you to really focus on is all these five, right? You know, the five steps that we've just gone through. Transforming your mindset, maximizing your energy, finding a system or using a system, leveraging your network and team, using technology, and maybe, you know, you might just take little steps with each one. You know, it's not about putting it all in place today, right? But I want you to consider these five different areas and think about what could I do better? You know, what can I change now for myself? Where do I know that I'm maybe weak or I haven't thought about it? Where can I push myself? And I also want you to focus on the 10 hour goals, working with a buyer and a seller. You know, focus on that and start tracking. Okay, look, I got a new client, great. Let's see if I can get to do this within 10 hours, okay? And obviously it's not necessarily gonna happen in the one week, it might be spread out over time, but you know, you've got a buyer and a seller and you've, you know, Try and focus your time so you get more efficient, okay? Because I want to see what you do with this. And I would actually love to hear what you do with this. So I would love it if you actually connected with me and said, hey, Sarah, that worked for me. Or you know what, that was a great idea. Or I started doing something and you know what? So like in a month from now, you know what? I challenge myself and guess what? Drink more water now, whatever it is. <laughs> okay. What are you going to do tomorrow? to transform your business based on what we just talked about today. As a thank you for being here today, uh, some of you may have seen or may not have seen, but if you haven't, uh, I was featured in Canadian Real Estate Wealth and I actually, in this article, uh, share my top five investor tips um, and top five investor lessons. So I will put something on Century 21. Basically you click on it, you put in your email, the PDF will come right out to you. And um, there was an online version, but it didn't have all the quick, you know, investor tools and tips. So I think that that's really valuable. So I am happy to send that out to you as a thank you. So I appreciate you all coming in today. But thank you. Thank you for being here. So yeah, thank you.